Another fact pattern regarding naturalization too that popped up uh, is if you have an F2A case pending for like a child. So let's say your child's 17 and you file I-130 for them. If the child, that's not a good timeline. Let's say the child's 20 and you file I-130. If you remain a green card holder, the Child Status Protection Act will keep the child's age under 21 and you're good. They'll process like they're under 21, even if they age out over 21 um, using the child CISPA, CSPA analysis. However, if the parent naturalizes after the kids turn 21, that breaks the Child Status Protection Act and makes the case become an F1, um, adult child of a U.S. citizen, and really screws up the priority date and timing issues that go with it. I wasn't aware of that. I was I give I told somebody like, no, the Child Status Protection Act protects you, but actually, I haven't seen this scenario. So in a conversation, I'm like, give me a sec, give me a day, and I research like, oh, that's pretty bad. Now, there's some like splits in the circuits, the Ninth Circuit and the Fourth Circuit, like view this kind of differently. Um, but both of them bad for the beneficiary. Um, I, I didn't get too deep into it once I saw this. I'm not going to get too deep into it right now. But just to be prepared, if you have a, a you know an F2A case where the child's aged out, but the child status protection is going to protect them, don't let the parents naturalize because that's going to demolish the case. So that's to be effective.